What's up, everyone? It's Scotty with Money Vesting. In this video, we are going to talk about one stock that I talked about. It's an underrated company. Just a few days ago, they reported earnings and they have been selling off. So is it time to finally be a buyer in this company? That's what we're going to discuss. As always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All I'm asking in return is, again, you drop a like. And of course, check out the links down below for our Discord, for our Patreon. If you want to, of course, be a part of our Money Vesting community and, of course, get access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, members only private videos intrinsic value spreadsheets there's a lot of benefits and everything is going to be included with the link down below and we'd love to have you on board so the company that we are talking about today is going to be technoglass ticker symbol tgls uh, and again i did a video on this company uh, just a few days ago and you know we, we talked about how they are going to be reporting earnings very soon and they did drop over 13 percent that particular day when they reported earnings even though they beat on both eps and revenue and today they're down another four percent trading as low as $38. They are down from $54 from their all-time highs. It's down over 30%. So we're going to talk about it because it's now starting to get a really, really interesting with this company because they beat on EPS, they beat on revenue. So they reported $1.12 per share versus about $0.98 cents per share or about dollar per share. That was the expectation. And revenue came in at $225 million versus $209 million that was the expectation as well. So again, that was a beat on EPS, beat on revenue. And they also reported revenue growth of over 30%, which I'll break down in just a minute. So record total revenues up 33% to $225 million. Strong organic growth in both multifamily and commercial and single family residential businesses. Gross margins were up 52, actually 520 basis point. That's a 5.2% increase on a year-over-year basis to 48.7%. And net income was up to $52.6 million or $1.10 per share. And adjusted net income was $53.5 million to $1.12 per share. Adjusted EBITDA up 55% year-over-year to $85 million, representing 37.7% of total revenues. That's your EBITDA margins right there. And producing strong cash flow, excluding annual tax payments and backlog growth expanded to 19.4% uh, year-over-year to an all-time high of $797 million. So overall, the numbers were fantastic. Again, gross margins 48.7%, adjusted EBITDA margin 37.7%, and net leverage was down to 0 0.2% which we'll talk about later in the video as well. But this right here, all organic revenue growth, 33.3%. Uh, again, this right here is the revenue number, $225 million. And single family residential revenues increased 11 million or 15% to just under $87 million, accounted for 39% of total sales. Again, you do want to check out my other video if you haven't already, where we go over you know, what this company is all about. What do they actually do? They basically design, manufacture, develop architectural glass for commercial buildings, you know, residential buildings, multifamilies, all those different things, but they pretty much produce glass. That's why they're called techno glass. And this right here is the margin increase last trailing 12 months, 51.5% operating cash flow, just under 120 million dollars uh and again gross margins increasing to 51.5 percent in the last trillion 12 months up from 31.5 percent at the end of 2019 that just goes to show how efficient they are at running their business now and this is their continued balance sheet improved the leverage where total debt has gone down from 260 million down to 170 million and net debt over adjusted ebitda has also gone down to 0.2 so meaning their ebitda has grown so well their net debt which is after accounting for cash over adjusted EBITDA is down to 0.2 from, from a little under three. It's come down to 0.2, which is significant improvement. And of course, the company at lower interest rate tier under debt agreements at SOFR plus 1.5%. Uh, and of course, we got no significant debt maturities until end of 2026. And they've also got a lot of variable rate debt hedged through 2026 at low rates, mitigating interest rate fluctuations as well, because of course, interest rates are higher at the moment. Now, this right here is a slide going over the revenue and EBITDA and how consistently they've been able to grow every single year since 2013. Their revenue CAGR has been a little bit over 16.5% and adjusted EBITDA CAGR, which is because of the higher margins at 24.3%. That's the growth rate. That's not the margin. That's the growth rate of adjusted EBITDA over the last um, 10 years for the company, right? Very, very strong numbers uh, from this company. This right here is going to be that outlook. So revenue they're expecting 830 to 855 million dollars is going to be a 16 to 19 percent revenue growth, with adjusted EBITDA expected to 20 to 26 percent year-over-year -year growth to 320, 355, 335 million dollars. And right now the market cap after the sell-off is 1.8 billion dollars. So if we do 1800 divided by 335, we're looking at 5.3 times 
adjusted EBITDA at the moment. And of course, 1800 divided by 855, we're looking at 2.1 times sales for a company that is doing over 51, 52% gross margins at the moment. And if we do take, let's say, net income, right? So which was, let's just go back a little bit. I'm going to do net income here was 52.6 million on $225 worth of revenues. So let's just calculate our margins very quickly. 52.6 divided by 225.3, looking at 24% margins. So 855 times 28, right? Or 24, that is going to be around $205 million in net income for the entire year. So 1.8 billion now. So let's just do 1800 divided by 205, 8.7 times earnings. That's where we are on a 2023 basis, right? So if you come back to the valuation for the company, we're looking at a valuation of, uh, yep, so a little under 10 times earnings right now. This is probably going to be even lower considering that the earnings are $205 million. Price to sales under three, price to cash flow a little under 18, and enterprise value to EBITDA under six. This is going to be even lower right now based on our calculations. So we've got a very cheap valuation. Net debt is very, very small amounts of net debt. They do still have a very strong uh, return on assets at 26%, return on equity 53%, return on invested capital 33%, not to mention current ratio 2.2, quick ratio 1.5, net debt to EBITDA and debt to free cash flow, also lower numbers. And we've got earnings expectations increasing from 421 to over five bucks and revenue expected to go from 854 million to over a billion dollars by 2026. So consistently growing. The growth rate obviously is a lot slower. It's not like a super high growth company, but it is consistent and it is a little bit more of a defensive play, so to speak. They do pay out a dividend of a little bit under 1%, uh, 90 basis points. Um, and of course, we've seen the stock price literally collapse down to $38. So my fair value, I think, was in and around these levels. If I remember correctly, it was around $38, $37. And not to mention, we've got a huge technical support at that 200 simple moving average. I think if it does break down below this support, 32 is a possibility. That's a 300 simple moving average, but it'll only make Technoglass even more attractive at those prices from a risk reward standpoint. Not to mention this right here is a very, very strong support. So you can see that we've bounced off of that level, not once. So this right here was the same exact level uh, back in March of 23 at around $37. We came down and retested this level in June before obviously rallying over 45%. And right now we're back at that level once again. So we've got a very strong support. And of course, if you do some price by volume analysis, we get the price at around 39 40 uh, you know, to as much as 43.50. So those right there are going to be a couple levels where there's a lot of volume. Most traded price for Technoglass in the last several months has been around 40 to 43 dollars, and, and right now it's trading at 38. So very very strong support with those moving averages. In case it breaks down, just you know, if that acceleration happens for sell-off, if it breaks down below this level, then I think 32.50 is about as low as I could personally see Technoglass go to before the valuation just starts to become a, like absurd, right? Absurdly low is what I'm talking about. So like really, really cheap. Uh, so 32.50 is going to be that support next. Uh, but right now, of course, we're at a very strong area of demand, which is where I also do believe considering the oversold levels from an RSI and MACD standpoint, there's a possibility that we start to see that pattern go sideways, consolidation, and of course, starts to move back higher to the upside. So in my opinion, I think this is a company worth looking into. Of course, none of this is financial advice, but do your due diligence, do your research on this company, because I do believe there is potential for Technoglass. And I'll, I'll share more details in our Discord uh, and what I'm planning to do as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord Patreon down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.